Hi, my name is Rich McHugh, and I'd like to talk for a couple of minutes about some reflections I've had on my master's thesis from 2016, where I studied the effectiveness of flip, flipped information literacy instruction in first year uh, research and composition classes here at UVic. And I guess, first of all, I'd like to mention I partner with Dr. Heidi Derrick, Dr. Richard Picard, and Dr. Andrew Murray to run my study. And the library's Tina Bebbington was also very helpful in helping me navigate the library side of things. Here's a quick outline of what I'm going to cover in the next 10 minutes or so. Now, the purposes of my study were to first determine whether or not a well-designed flipped learning methodology would lead to higher assessment scores for information literacy instruction, and second, discover learner attitudes towards flipped information literacy learning. In a flipped learning class, students typically complete instructional work at home using videos and exercises to begin to learn new concepts and skills. Face-to-face -face class time is then devoted primarily to active learning exercises to put into practice the knowledge and the skills from their pre-class work. The instructor can then assist and guide students who need help with the hands-on exercises during class time. In my literature review and preparation for this research project, uh, I pulled out a few highlights from, from the research I did. First of all, uh, flip learning is not new. A traditional graduate seminar could be described as flip learning. What is new are that there are low-cost technologies that enable students to easily watch videos and engage in interactive activities in preparation for class. Second, pedagogy or teaching methods, not technology, is paramount. However, some new technologies can enable new teaching methods. Third, one-shot library sessions are not as effective as point-of-need information literacy instruction spread throughout the class. And fourth, and related to that, wherever possible, library information literacy curriculum should be integrated into courses so that it is taught to students just as they need the information or skills to complete assignments. I used a mixed methods design in order to get a more rounded picture of what was happening in the flipped learning and traditional inf information literacy classes. I worked with Dr. Picard to integrate information literacy instruction across all or parts of six of his class sessions using a flipped instruction methodology. The pre and post tests I used were from the University of Alberta Libraries Information Literacy Assessment and Advocacy Project, and these were administered either side of the information literacy instruction. I conducted semi-structured student interviews with a subset of students in order to explore their information literacy experience once the class was over. And lastly, uh, major papers were evaluated by instructors uh, using RAILS or the rubric assessment for information literacy, literacy skills created in collaboration with ACRL and were used as a final measure of information literacy knowledge and skill acquisition. Students from Dr. Andrew Murray's section were recruited to be part of the control group, and students from Dr. Picard's two sections were recruited to be part of the flip treatment group. So, results. The students, the flip students registered a test score gain of 2% higher than the control group, but the sample size wasn't large enough for the observed effect to be outside the margin of error. So it was inconclusive, unfortunately. The flipped learning ESL participants registered a gain of 27%, which was 19% higher than the control group, but again outside the margin of error because of the small sample size. So while these numbers are definitely encouraging, they are not definitive, but the 2% uh, test score gain is in line with what other larger uh, research projects have found on flipped learning versus traditional lecture-based learning. I used the RAILS, or Rubric Assessment of Information Literacy Skills, which was created in partnership with the ACRL Assessment Immersion Program. The rubric was then modified with the input of Dr. Picard and Dr. Murray in order for them to grade the information literacy portions of the major paper assignments for all of their students. I won't spend a lot of time reviewing their, the feedback from the student interviews, 
But suffice to say, perceptions of flipped learning were overwhelmingly positive. In terms of the educational implications of flipped learning, rather than revolutionizing the way classes are taught with high-tech software or hardware, flipped learning encourages educators to rethink how they can incorporate more active learning activities into their classes. The flipped learning curriculum used in the study had a ratio of approximately 10 to 20% in-class instruction and 80 to 90% active learning during face-to-face -face class time. The flipped learning pre-class videos and exercises facilitated differentiation, differentiated learning for all students, or in other words, let them move through the pre-class materials at their own pace and review the materials if need be. But this was especially helpful for uh, ESL students. One student said, the pre-class videos are much more user-friendly than a lecture if you're using, if you're learning English. Being able to pause and rewind is huge. Because of this, ESL students arrive to class closer to the level of preparedness of their active, of their native English-speaking classmates, ready to participate in the active learning exercises and having a reduced cognitive load, which is really important for uh, comprehension and learning. The active learning work in class was appreciated, especially since in Dr. Picard's class, almost all of the in-class activities helped learners make progress on their major paper assignments. These meaningful in-class activities not only help learners practice the skills they were introduced to in the pre-class work, but also acted as scaffolding for their major paper assignments. One student said that his paper, that he, one student said that he started his paper much earlier in the semester than he would have otherwise. In order to do this, of course, there needs to be a closer collaboration with course instructors and program coordinators. So how I went about flipping uh, the information literacy in these classes. Well, first of all, I worked with Dr. Heidi Derrick to develop the flipped information literacy cur curriculum. To start with, she gave me her syllabus and I identified the lectures during the semester that touched on information literacy. After consulting with Heidi, she shared with me her detailed lecture notes and the classes with information literacy content. Working from the syllabus and lecture notes, I pulled out the learning outcomes that seemed to be inherent in those documents. I ran those learning outcomes by Heidi and, Dr. and Richard Picard and after they'd signed off on them, I mapped the learning outcomes to the six classes where Heidi covered information literacy skills. With that done, I went back to Heidi's lecture notes and made more detailed learning outcomes for each class. Once the detailed class by class learning outcomes had been approved by Heidi, I created a quiz or, or formative assessment that would let students know if they'd met those learning outcomes before coming to class. This quiz was taken by students after completing the pre-class exercises to let them know if they were ready for the in-class exercises or not. Next, I created the pre-class work. The pre-class work was a mix of readings that Heidi had, already, had prepared for the students already, and then I supplemented those readings with library instructional videos and library web pages. I didn't create any new instructional videos or resources, 80% of the videos came from our library, and the other 20% came from other academic libraries. Heidi already had many excellent in-class exercises, so I added those exercises and other mainly group-based activities that would allow students to practice the skills and knowledge that they'd covered in the pre-class exercises, and wherever possible, use those activities to help students move their major paper assignment forward. For example, this is where many students created the first draft of their thesis statement for their major paper assignment. And as group work, they're also able to see their thesis statements of their classmates during class time as they posted them on the wall on uh, pieces of paper. Seeing how helpful it was to use in-class assignments to help students start and move their major paper forward was one of the most significant things that I learned during my work with Heidi and Richard. Here are some of Dr. Picard's comments and suggestions that he gave to me after the class was over. 
When I asked him if there are any differences in student feedback between the two sections he taught, he said that the weaker section commented that they realized that they knew less than they thought they did and were able to communicate that. And these are my words now. Maybe that's because the in of the in-class work they did or maybe the pre-class formative assessment was helpful in that regard. I also asked Dr. Picard if the flipped information literacy modules might be helpful for junior instructors in particular. He said that they should be useful. Uh, and I quote him again, part of the problem with PhD student instructors is they put way too much time into preparing for classes. These modules would help keep them on track and not put as much time into preparing needlessly. When I asked him how he felt that the flipped information literacy sessions went in general, Dr. Picard said, my sense is that there was a more consistent level of student interest in the flip classes than there was in the face-to-face -face lecture classes that I taught. So if you'd like to go deeper, here's a couple of links that will take you to my complete thesis. And if you want to take a look at this presentation uh, and the notes that go along with it, you can look at the link below that. But if you have any questions, uh, please let me know um, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.